brother said he can't keep the law. You know he mean. You know what he been doing. Can't keep the law. Can't keep Let me first John 5 and 3. You love Babylon. God? You love God? Yeah, but this is Babylon. Let me ask you a question. Oh. Yeah, this is Babylon. Guess what? You know what that guy do with anything? They go personal. Do you love God? Yeah. How do you show God love? You send him flowers? What? I would say for him every moment. Every hey, bro, you say you can't keep the laws? Why can't you? One, I'm macho. You what? One, I'm macho. You're macho? I'm macho. You're out here? Yeah. Okay. So why did Christ, if you can't, all right, so if you can't keep God's laws, why did Christ say this? Give me Matthew 5, 48. Bring it out! How you doing, sis? He was running away a couple seconds ago for no reason, sis. We out here to help you, you know. We out here to help you. Did you hear the word that that rapper brought out? I'm just out here with him. All right, you out here with him, so then you're going to get the same word. I'm just listening. You believe in Jesus? Jesus Christ? Believe in Jesus Christ. All right, check it out. Get Matthew five. Matthew chapter five, verse forty-eight. Bro. Be ye therefore perfect. What? Be ye therefore perfect. So Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, is telling all you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to be perfect. Bro. Bro. So how do you be perfect, brother? Oh, say it again. It's impossible. Read it again. We're gonna show you how you be perfect. Be ye therefore perfect, uh -huh. even as your Father. Which is in heaven is perfect. So he's telling Jesus Christ is telling us to be ye therefore perfect, even as our Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Right. So what is that telling you? Saying be perfect. Right. So now your question should be, how do I become perfect? Right. Right. Impossible. You're saying it's impossible. You don't even know how yet. Let's see what the Bible says. Get Kings eight and sixty one. Bro. Bring it out. Kings eight and sixty one. We're gonna show you how. Then I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna go over some laws, and we're gonna see if you're if you're capable of keeping those laws. Okay. Right. Read that. The book of First Kings, chapter eight, verse sixty-one. Let let your heart therefore be perfect. Oh, he's telling, let your heart therefore be perfect. Go ahead. With the Lord our God. With the Lord our God. So Christ said to be therefore perfect, right? right. So now he's telling us to let our hearts therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. How? Read. To walk. In his statue, we must walk in the Most High God's statutes, which you said we can't do. I'm gonna show you that you can't do it. Read. And to keep his commandments. And to do what? Keep his commandments. The way we become perfect is to keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. Now I'm gonna show you a commandment. I'm, yeah, finish it off. As at this day. As at this day. Right now, these laws are not going away. So I'm gonna show you a law, and let me see if you can't do it. Give me fringes. Hello. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Right up. Speak unto the children of Israel. He's telling you to speak unto the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Go ahead. And bid them. And command them to do what? That they make them fringes in the borders of their government uh -huh. throughout their generations. No, just back here, because you said that you were talking to Solomon, right? He said throughout your generations. What does that mean? Solomon then walking away. What does this mean? When he says throughout your generation, that means forever. Right. Read again. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel mm -hmm. and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their government uh -huh. throughout their generation. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So I'm going to ask you now, brother, are you able to put fringes on the borders of your clothes? Because I'm broke. Because you broke? Monetary. Monetary issue. Do you have a dollar? No. You don't have one dollar in your pocket. Nothing. Can you get change from your people? I gotta steal to eat. That's why I'm you gotta steal I'm to already eat. already messed up with the statue. I gotta steal to eat. If you're stealing, brother, steal no more. But it's saying Understand proper, something. It's saying proper. You can't fault a man that's hungry for stealing to eat. Give me Proverbs 30 and 8. Yeah. Bring it up. Bring it up. We can't fault a man, but does that matter of fact, give me the law. Get Exodus 20. Bring it up. Because God tells you. If there's a law in regards to stealing, right? So if you're saying you got to steal to eat. Second Thessalonians 3 and 8. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 15. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt what? Shall not steal. That's the law. Now we understand that we've been given, we've been given an environment that perpetuates that, that makes our people steal. Why? Because we've been given poverty. 
Solomon says that thing. Get Proverbs 30 real quick. So, but understand something. But understand something. You're going through a temptation. The Most High has a way for you to get out of that temptation. He's made a way for you to get out of that thing. If you submit yourself to his word. Right. Read. Proverbs 30 and... Is it 8? 8. Yeah, go ahead. The book of Proverbs chapter 30 verse 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. It says remove far from me vanity and lies. Go ahead. Give me neither poverty. Don't give me poverty, he's saying. Go ahead. No riches. No riches. He doesn't even want us to be rich. Why? Feed me with food convenient for me. Right. You must be fed right. with food convenient for us. Go ahead. Least I be full. Tonight. Lest he be full, lest you be rich and do what? And deny thee. And deny the Most High God. We see all of our rich people that make it in this world, so to speak, they deny the Most High God. They don't follow His law, statutes, and commandments because they feel as if they did this thing they sell. They deny God. Read on. And say, who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? I did this. Go ahead. Or least I be poor. At least you be poor. Like now you just said that you were poor, right? So understand something. Hold on a second. Read. Least I be poor and still. And what? And still. So we understand. Understand that our enemies set this whole system up. Since slavery, since we were walked off this plantation, they gave us poverty as a trap for you to steal, right? But understand something. No, it's, it's spiritual. Give me Ephesians 4, 28. Now, we're going to show you what you're supposed to do. No, we're not talking. We're showing you. We're living examples. We came up poor. We came up on the streets. We were homeless. We were selling drugs. We were selling dope to our people. But we found out this Bible tells us not to do it, and the Most High God got us out of this thing. That's right. Now we repented and keeping his Lord. Read. The they book already of it. killing us, brother. Okay, is y'all gonna start killing back? No, because that's no, not the weapons of our warfare. Read that real quick. Then give me, give me that weapons of our warfare, Corinthians. Read. The, the book, book, book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 28. Bring it out. Let him that stole steal no more. Read it again. Let him that stole steal no more. So, brother, let him that stole steal no more. What is that saying? Man, give me, give me Sirach 15. Like, read it. What you got? But rather, but what? But rather, but hold on. But do what? Let him labor. Let him do what? Labor. Let him do what? Labor. Let him do what? Labor. Read it again from the top. Read it again from the top. Let him that stole steal no more. Uh -huh. But rather. Let him labor! God's army. You want to see an army? I want to go to war with him, not spirit. Let me show you the war, brother. Give me Ezekiel. Give me, give me that um, weapons of our warfare, 1 Corinthians. Let me show you the war that we in. Let me show you the war that we in, brother. Listen, listen, our enemies, listen, our enemies have been blessed. Hey, our enemies just dropped a damn bomb named Moab on, on Afghanistan. Our enemies got drones flying in the air. Our enemies at the drop of a hat can bring a tank right down this block. You think you can fight that? Bring it out! Like that? No, this is how we deal with our enemies. We it stop out. supporting their system. Today is the most high Sabbath day. If everybody stop buying and selling on this day, guess what? Our enemy gets crippled. That's you know, right! Understand that if our women start dressing modestly and our men stop stealing and killing one another, guess what? We don't find it in their prison system now. That's, That's right! right. You understand that? Bring it out. This is our warfare. Read. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare. Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh. What's your name, brother? Come here. What's your name, man? Huh? Nobody. Your name is nobody? Nobody. But I already I'm up on all. Alright, nobody. Check it out. Here we go. Read. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 3. Uh-huh. For though we walk in the flesh. Well, brother. I'm going to call you Mr. Nobody because that's what you said your name is. Mr. Nobody, for though we walk in the flesh, how you doing, brother? What's your name, man? Your name is Travis. We Israel united in Christ. Read on. For though we walk in the flesh, what do we do? We do not war after the flesh. We do not war after the flesh, Mr. Nobody and Travis. Right. Read. Right. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We right. tried to fight back on them. In Philadelphia, back in the early 80s, and what happened? They dropped a damn bomb on that thing. Right. right. We tried to fight back with the Black Panthers. The Panthers, and they, they had guns up and things of that nature. What happened? Put them to death. They put the white woman in there. Right. right. Drugs. All types of things happen. We cannot war after the flesh. Our people don't understand that. Free. But mighty through God. Our weapons are mighty through God. You keeping the Sabbath holy is mighty through God. That's right. And that goes against 
this whole society. Right, right. So stop buying pork right now. Every single Israelite, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, stop buying pork. What happened to this economy? You don't know? I'm a Muslim in practice, so I don't eat pork. All praises, but guess what? Not, not all praises about the Muslim stuff, but not eating pork, all praises. That cripples this economy. Right. You want to deal with this brother here based off of his money, based off his philosophies. Get the hell out of the Christian church. Stop doing those things, and then we can turn this, our people around. Right. Finish that off. To the pulling down of strongholds. We're here to pull down strongholds. That brother said that he's poor. That's why he steals, and he's going to steal for the rest of his life. Right. And the Bible says st steal no more. Free. Casting down imagination. We're casting down imagination. You can be perfect. Right. You can keep God's laws. Right. Well, the Bible says you can do it, and the laws is not grievous. Right. You can throw your beard on your face. What's hard about that? There's nothing wrong with that, man. You can put fringes on the borders of your garment. Free. And every high thing. And that, every high thing that does what? That exalts it itself against the knowledge of God. It exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Against the knowledge of God. Against God's laws. You marry and you have one wife. You lie down with that sister you marry and you take care of your family. Right. Right. All of those things are laws of God. We're right. bringing out the knowledge. Give me Malachi 2 and then you come back up. Bring it out. We're bringing out the knowledge to our people today. We're going to show you what the knowledge of God is. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. Hold on a second, brother. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, uh -huh. and they should seek the law. The what? The law uh -huh. at his mouth. So what's the knowledge, Travis? The law, no, read it again. We want to make sure you understand what the knowledge is. Read. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. Uh -huh. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So the priest's lips should keep knowledge, right? Read. And they should seek the law. The what? The law. The what? The law uh -huh. at his mouth. So what is the knowledge? But what is supposed to come out of the preacher's mouth? Right. But Read it again. I want you to say it, Travis. Read. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So out of the preacher's mouth, like you said, right? It should keep knowledge. So what are we supposed to be expecting to hear from the priest? Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. So what are, what are your priests supposed to be teaching you? He's teaching the knowledge of the law. God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Yeah, right. Right. That's Hello, I'm Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.